so today, my topic is on five secrets to a knockout about page. And I came up with this because... You know, I have people come up to me at WordPress meetups and, you know, kind of clients and prospective clients ask, well, what do I... What do I put on that page? How do I talk about myself so people will listen and I actually reach my customers? And you know, I get these kind of questions over and over again because I think people focus um, on themselves and get intimidated and be like, how do I either fit you know, my business into 400 words or how do I take up 400 words <laughs> with what I do and explain to people in layman's terms? So that's what I'm here to explain to you uh, today. Um, and I think, you know, the most important part is knowing yourself um, as well as knowing your audience. So your about page is really your first opportun- opportunity for deep connection with that audience. So whoever you're appealing to, um, your existing customers, your prospective customers, uh, readers, if you're a blogger, um, like my friend over here, um, he's been blogging for years now. And uh, I like to read him because he's always, you know, he's always got so much interesting stuff to say and he's got a crazy interesting story. Um, so whoever you're appealing to, uh, you want to know. So target audience. And I think people kind of get tripped up here because they think, well, how do I find them and how do I keep them interested? And what I like to do is sit down with my clients and do what's called an empathy map. And so you have a simple piece of paper, and I actually have it in a list of resources at the end of my presentation. But it's a simple piece of paper, and you write everything down about what your readers are thinking and feeling and doing, and I think uh, saying um, when they first come to your blog or they first look for your product or service. And then you do that exercise again for what your vision is for them after they've worked with you or after they've read your wonderful piece or <laughs> after you've made that connection with them. Um, and keyword research is a big part of that too. Uh, so if you know your audience and you have your customer persona developed um, and you write to that uh, ideally (laughs) that's your first step so just kind of to see that in practice I want you to take a look at two about pages I've written for clients so this one is for (laughs) a friend of mine she's a dance instructor social media manager you know, crazy passionate business owner who loves helping entrepreneurs um, get their kind of online presence set up and set them apart from the competition. So she's got a lot of personality. Um, and she's a one woman show type deal. So I, you know, I really played up um, her go getter attitude. She's a to do lister. She's a. A type A, but also a really warm personality. Um, And in the second paragraph, I really have her empathize with her customers because, you know, to kind of show she's in tune with, she knows what they want. Um, And kind of the end of that, I talk about, you know, I'm, I'm here now and basically I'm ready to work with you. And that's in contrast to a site I did for a steel plate work company in my hometown. They are more of a corporate feel. They they have these million dollar projects and they make like steel plate storage facilities for all different types of industries. So what you're going for in manufacturing is more dependability, high quality, um, custom solutions, things like that. And this is much more conservative and it's much more kind of product focused, whereas my friend's is service focused. Uh, and it it's a really good, clean layout. Um, the web design company that I worked with on this with um, did a really good job of 
kind of getting it all on there in terms of you know what they do. And it's no less personal, but it's a different feel. Um, so after you've kind of connected with your audience, you want to build trust with them. And I think in one of our first talks today, if you were in Joey Coleman's talk, he talked about building trust with your audience. And this is kind of the same, you know, more similar idea. Um, they're not going to buy from you if they don't trust you. So you want to, and he illustrated this throughout his talk, you want to show them, not tell them that they can trust you. But how do you do that? Well, you get testimonials. Um, another client of mine is a virtual assistant. And her problem is, I think, that people, when they first hear of virtual assistants, they think, what do they do? And if they're not in my office, how do I watch them? And how do I make sure they're on task? And how do I keep them accountable? Well, this testimonial goes a long way to illustrating that. Uh, she's a crazy good um, collaborator and worker, and she's incredibly smart. And you know, her her client's happiness with her service is you know kind of illustrated here. The amazing Sandra Booker got me through my first ever live webinar. If you've ever done a webinar, you know how precious that is. Um, you know, with no crying and no sweat. I would pay for that. Uh, another thing you can do is illustrate your credibility. Another presenter we had today was Michelle Ames. She's a website designer, and she's been in the WordPress community for, I think, six years now. And she's done tons of stuff in the WordPress community, and she's a crazy smart marketer. And so she really drives that home on her page. And when I read it, I said, I would totally work with this lady. <laughs> look, at all the, look at all the stuff she does. Look at all the people she has contacts with. Look at all the formal education she has. And her, she's got 20 years of experience in um, fundraising, marketing, and teaching. You know, I'm sure she could <laughs> do whatever I needed her to do. Um, and so that inspires confidence in prospects. That makes them say, okay, um, if she's helped all these other people, there's a chance that she can guide me through my challenge. Another thing in number three, and I think this is another challenge people have, is crafting your story in your own voice and finding your sweet spot and letting your personality shine. Um, this is, I think, a lot of the time what my job is, is to find those stories in people's businesses and help them bring them out, help them give them, oops, help them give, like, help, uh, what's going on here? Help give them life. So what does it mean to craft your own story? Well, in, you know, four or five hundred words, you've got to set yourself apart from every other person on the web who does what you do. So Todd over here has an amazing story. Uh, he's a blogger, but he's so much more than that. He's a storyteller. And when I saw him talk two years ago, I thought, I've got to have him talk <laughs> at my local meetup. And so I, you know, I wrote him an email and I said, Todd, you know, you've got to come down and talk to the writers in my community because they're just that good <laughs> at crafting your story. And, you know, he, um, if you know anything about him, he's been through an amazing health journey that I'm sure he can tell you more about. But he's got a compelling story, so much so that I remember it two years later. That's a, you know, that fosters connection. And when you foster connection, um, all that other stuff comes into play. 
Um, so, again, my client, the virtual assistant, you know, talks about how she's got integrity and she does things with peace and love and she built this little company and her vision is to change the world. She wants to make the lives of small business owners easier. And you know, she, she talks about helping people do the work they were called to do, not, um, not just sitting at their desks, right? So does anyone here, is anyone here kind of writing your about page right now and you're totally lost as to, you know, what's my story and how do I find it? That, so what do you, what do you do? Uh, I'm uh, retired. I'm trying to find myself. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, a lot of people have been in your position. My mom's actually retired. And, you know, what I find is that it's a real, um, almost like a, a new life for them. Your identity isn't built around work anymore. It's built around um, probably your hobbies, um, your, you know, your family. Things that all people want to do. Yeah, thing, you know, what do you want to do now is the question you're asking yourself, not what does my boss want, to, want me to do by 5 o'clock. It's a, <laughs> um, from, from what I've seen from, you know, both my parents and kind of other people I know is that it's a totally different outlook on life. And it's a, you know, it's a big question to answer. Um, so how, I guess you really start to soul search in terms of, you know, what, what makes me different than any of the other retirees out there? And if I want to, um, if I want to monetize that by any chance, <laughs> uh, how do I kind of appeal to my market, right? Um, and I think when, you know, by the time you kind of engage yourself in that conversation, it's, um, I think you'll surprise yourself with the, with the stuff you come out with. Uh, I know the skeptical thing that I don't want to do, but I don't know what I, I don't want to be gardening, <laughs> I don't want to be drunk at night when I go to sleep, yeah. but I want to do something constructive, leave some kind of legacy, and maybe pass my knowledge. I think I know a lot of stuff, Yeah. and I somehow want to leave it for some, so it can be helpful for other people. Yeah. So, like, what um, what industry or like, what's your? Do you have a specific hobby or? Well, I worked as an engineer for a long time, all my life. Okay. But I don't want to do engineering anymore. Yeah. But I want to write. I'm, write, I'm trying to write books for the last couple of years. Oh. Without much success. Yeah. And what's the other websites? Anything on that? Yeah. So, like, maybe self-publishing is an option or. Yeah, once I get the materials, yes. Yeah. I don't have book out. I mean, I don't have a book that I can publish. Yeah. So, um, you're, you know, when you kind of figure that out, your about page might be centered around, I'm a self-published author, here's what I write, and here are my books, plural. <laughs> and, you know, and what they're about. And then you kind of zero in, you do the keyword research uh, for that topic, and you start... You start, then you start coming up with all sorts of ideas for blog posts, and you build your content strategy around that. That's when it gets really. <laughs> that's when it gets really fun. Um, and I, you know, as a writer, I can sympathize with how do I, how do I get into words? What my life's passion is, because it's not easy. It's not easy for me either. Um, it's not easy to do it for yourself. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, th and I think that's what people bring me in for. But when I have to do it myself, I have to really like, it takes weeks still. <laughs> it's a whole different ball game when it's yourself. So, and it requires asking yourself a lot of hard questions. Um, you know, but part of that is that you get to kind of go back through your journey and to take, you know, kind of key milestones or key moments and say, you know, how do I, how do I integrate that and how do I infuse kind of my passion into my story on a page? And one of the ways to do that is to use pictures and video. Uh, because I work with words, but what you can do with... Um, 
with words and pictures and video is amazing. Um, I have had to kind of struggle with this because I'm a storyteller and I also, one of my hobbies is photography and I like to write long form content um, and what, you know, what people, people kind of groan at that sometimes. They say, long form content, you mean I have to spend, you know, half an hour reading something? Um, and, you know, if you're a blogger, you don't want to hit people with a wall of great text. You want to use color and, uh, and passion, you know, in life and, you know, more than, more than words. So I work with a lot of different, um, that's where designers come in. That's where videographers come in. And there are tons of, you know, equipment and, you know, different devices out there now that you can take a video on your smartphone in 20 seconds that you couldn't 10 years ago. And, you know, com come up with a completely exceptional about page or blog post. And this is another example. I didn't write this one. Um, but... This is an example of an about page I happened across when I was writing an article on this company. So what I loved about this is that they have their story, um, but their pictures really bring it out. They build themselves as, and I think they are, the only oyster house in Niagara, where I'm from. And how they started six years ago was they bought a 1974 VW camper and that was their kind of you know that was their kind of stick um, and from there they've grown their business into a flagship restaurant and you see them at the ribbon cutting there um, and it's just a it's just an amazing story uh, Mike Langley the guy pictured there I actually wrote an article on him. He went to China to compete in this world. Um, it's called Shuck Off. And he competed in a world shocking championship um, at the end of the month in May. And to be like, he's so he's Canada's, I think, best or fastest shucker or something. And he's competing at the world level now. So I wrote an article for my client kind of playing that up and saying, you know, wow, we have this great story right, in, right here in Niagara. Basically, you know, a national champion. And he's going for the big time. Um, and, you know, what's, what really sets this page apart is the story. You can see kind of like the progress. And the VW camper is something that you don't see every other restaurant having. It's unique. Should that be a video, maybe? I think, like, maybe... Sound as well, because I think people nowadays don't... They're, they're not unimedia, they're multimedia. Yeah, so it's multimedia. Very much so multimedia. Um, I didn't happen to find it like a, a video I liked on an about page for this presentation. <laughs> but, you know, I think if they if they had video of them at a at a food festival or something. Shucking. Shucking? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Um, if he gets back and he and he puts one up there of, you know, him him on the stage hoisting the trophy, that's huge, right? Um, you know, different you know, different aspects of media. So I've had to really adjust my thinking, like, you know what, media and different multimedia is my friend. It brings more attention. It's all, you know, it's all content. It's all creating great content, right? So my fifth point is about white space. Um, so, yeah, you do want to have video and you want to have the best you know, possible story and you want to have pictures in there. But also, don't be afraid of white space because minimalism can be beautiful. And what I mean by that is that you don't have to fill up like every inch of your page. Uh, in fact, please don't. <laughs> it hurts my eyes. And, it, you know, it doesn't make for a great user experience. Uh, so use white space um, with judgment. <laughs> uh, so, one of the one of the about pages I love for this as an example is my friend uh, Jessica St. Peter. 
she runs a web design company called Brand Web Design. And she talks here about you know, what she offers clients. She you know, custom creates online solutions. She develops brands. And she does a little teaching to small business owners to you know, have them create their own brand and materials. She doesn't have any pictures on here, but what I loved is that she really used white space effectively. It's beautiful. It's simple. And sometimes that is the best thing to get your message across. Um, it's all pretty much right there. And what I love about her site is that um, she has kind of like different different sections and different colors and she really has flow to her page. She knows what she's doing. Um, she has calls to actions here. She has her social right up front. Um, she has more information where you can click. Um, so she knows what's up. And I think I had a bonus point in here about calls to action. So if you search HubSpot or any blog of any size on marketing, you're going to see all kinds of information. And you can probably subscribe to a bunch of different um, tools and newsletters and all that stuff about calls to action. Because we're forever arguing in the marketing world about how to create calls to action that actually motivate people to do what you want them to do. Um, because there's tons of different schools of thought on this. And people, I think, get all caught up in, well, what are the best, you know, most, what's going to get me the most clicks? And what I love about, you know, Jessica's site again here is that it's, you know, it's a really easy um, kind of flow to go from visiting her site and at the bottom she has this thanks for visiting are you interested in working with me book a discovery call bam okay I want to find out more um, so you're, you're telling your reader what you want them to do next because it's not always obvious um, it might be obvious to you <laughs> But I promise you it's not for your customers and your readers and um, anybody else outside who's visiting your site for the first time. So even if you're not um, selling something on your site, even if you're a blogger or an author, what you can do is say, you know, um, if you have a blog or if you have anywhere to point that reader, anything you want them to do next, this is where you want to put your call to action in. Um, this is where you want to tell them about that. And I've always, this has been always kind of one of my challenges when I first started creating content because, you know, I didn't want to be too, too pushy or I didn't want to yell at people. I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to be too car, you know, used car salesman y. Um, so, you know, I, I would agonize over this stuff. And I think, you know, what, what I look at when I see these examples is that, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, cheesy or chintzy. It doesn't have to give you a yucky feeling. It just has to tell them what you want them to do because they don't know. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, if they don't know, they're not going to give you their money and they're not going to come back to your site. Um, so calls to action are, are your friend. Uh, use them. Um, so what I want to point you to here are resources. Um, empathy maps, uh, what I talked about earlier. Um, some tips on how to make your own about page. And for keyword research and the search engine optimization, um, which I didn't talk about a lot, but it is also hugely important uh, for target, you know, targeting your page, is uh, Yoast SEO. If you're writing anything on WordPress, you want to get this plugin um, because it just gives you a really easy way of punching in your keyword um, and 
creating meta description and doing all that SEO stuff. And it color codes everything you need to do <laughs> to turn that little green light on that you want to get before you publish your page that says, okay, this page is good to go. It's optimized. Um, so it's a priceless tool to have. And there are free keyword research tools out there. So you can basically use, there's a lot of them. I don't know the ins and outs in each one, but in the research I did at lunchtime, <laughs> this is the article I found. Uh, so I will post this, uh, I will post my slide deck on SlideShare, and um, you, can, you can go and head there. But yeah, there are tons of, um, tons of, tons of tools out there to use. Um, everything from keyword.io, which is easy to remember, to uh, what are some other ones people like to use? Um, I believe there's a uh, hrefs, there's uh, There's you know, tons of uh, tons of free and paid tools out there, so they are your friend too. They might look intimidating at first, but learn to use them um, because it will be uh, worth your time. So now I want to answer your questions. Yeah? So I, you know, I love the idea that there's one pop-up sign up for my thing, but I hate it when it keeps coming up every single page that I'm going to someone's website, yeah. and this thing keeps coming up. So I feel like there should be a way to just have it come up once, and add, then it should know after that that you're still on the same site. Yeah. Is that a possibility? Um, so I, I think so, because I have that experience too. Um, and, you know, they're really... I'm, like, not as technically capable on this stuff as I wish I was. But, um, and I, I don't like to use those things on my own site just for that reason. Yeah. Um, if people want to want to contact me or want my stuff that badly. They'll figure it out, right? That's, yeah. Because yeah. it's so much. Yeah. You're constantly clicking it out. Yeah. Especially when you're on mobile and the X is kind of like grayed out way up in the corner and you can't see any of the content you actually came there to read. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, so media sites are, are bad for that, I find. Um, yeah. And also, like, when you go to write your email in, but it's not optimized for email, so it makes you type the whole thing out yeah. again. I'm just like, you know what? You're not going to Yeah. So, the, like, I wish that we knew which pop-ups only came once, which email boxes actually knew that an email was supposed to be there. Mm hmm yeah, it's kind of a wild west out there. I find like we're starting to standardize some of that stuff, and some of it is starting to be like regulated. Um, but in terms of like the tools that have been used, it's like I, f I find it's different for every site. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't even mind paying for it, but I just don't know which one to pay for. Yeah, and I, I'm always interested. I'm like. You know, I'm very passionate about learning more about kind of user experience and usability. So if anyone can do a talk on that next year, <laughs> I will come to it. Because um, user experience is, is huge in content as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks on your site. I don't know what's coming up. Which one do you use? Pardon me? I don't know what you use, but I use MailChimp. Yeah, it's just a setting to change. But it only pops up once. And once it's okay. out, it's X'd out. And when someone goes to put their uh, email in, it knows it's an email, so it says, here's your emails. There's How a setting. Is it, is it a setting, or it should know? I mean, it's a subscribe box. What else could it be? Yeah. Right? Yes. It should just automatically come with that, and I'll tell you go down to the number. Sure. But I have yeah. <laughs> sure. Writing the about you page, um, would you recommend writing in, like, first person or third person? Um, I, I like to write in, in first person. If you're like, are you a one woman kind of business? Well, it's me and my husband. Yeah. So I, I would. So there are different schools of thought on this. And, you know, you might talk to another marketer and they might say, 
make your company look as big as possible online because that builds credibility. And I believe that if you're if you're a one person business or you know one or two people, um, use the pronoun um, that makes sense. So if if you are a we, I say um, use we. Um, you know, if you're a partnership, we. If you're a one-person show, I. Um, I like I. Um, I like try not to start like every sentence with it because people scan. We we scan pages before we read them, and if people read I I I, even if you're talking about them, their eyes are going to glaze over. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Kind of at the top, start like start right in with the empathizing and talk to the pain points. If you know your target audience, you can talk more to their pain points and say, "I understand what you're feeling. You know, here's why you're on my site. Here's why you're like here's kind of what problems you might have." And on my own site, I use I because it's just me. <laughs> um, so. And I'm a freelancer. I'm a copywriter, and I—I I don't know. I don't think I plan to hire at all. Um, I, I partner a lot with web designers and you know social media people, but I—I um, I just work for myself. So I—I I like using I because I think it creates connection with my audience. And it says, you know, I'm what you see is what you get type thing. Yeah. So. You could write about this and do that. Well, he has this and he writes about, I write about certain things and then we write about things together. So like, sometimes I'm using I, sometimes I'm using we. Yeah. Um, def- like definitely in your blog posts, if you have a byline and you write as I and he writes as him or he, yeah. So if you have like, if you have a kind of a joint vision for that, what do you do? I should have asked what you did. Sorry, what? I should have asked what your what your business is about. Oh, okay. Um, so I I'd, I'd say if. If you have a kind of a joint vision, you talk we, you know, this is our story and kind of how we got here. And then you kind of point to your blog page and say, for each of our stories. Well, there's things that we write about together, like travel, but then there's things like you write technical stuff. Oh, okay. And I wouldn't have a clue. So when it comes up and it says by so and so, say by Jeffrey, or if I'm writing something about by yeah. So it's, you can see who is writing. So when he's writing and it comes up as him, it'll still say I. Mm-hmm. He knows Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I would suggest um, we for your about page if it's like single purpose, and I for your posts. Yeah. Would it matter then if it's a business or a blog title as opposed to the individuals that the vote is about? Like, it, you know, could say, you know, ABC Company yeah. is devoted to helping you with this, but you're probably more, you know, Travel ABC blog is here to do whatever and we bring whatever. So it's the conduct, it's not an individual, it's an entity. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've seen like different titles, like about us, um, or even about, or you know, different like for the corporate um, kind of like the corporate page. I did. Where is it? On the way back here. I used the company's name, Canada's premier tank builder. <laughs> TIW Steel Plate Works specializes in. So and so, um, and then on my other page, um, we used "I'm a go-getter, to-do lister, and goal setter." Um, so it's clearly like kind of a different tone um, and a different kind of a different message. Because here you're connecting with um, everybody in that company, from the executive down to the you know, the floor shop people. Here you're connecting with one woman. Um, so, 
I I think that was the question as I heard it like you say I'm a this I'm a that I do this I'm the other or you say Valerie Chalmers does this and Valerie Chalmers does this. I like I like I you prefer the yeah person. the third person um I don't know like I like putting my clients out there as if they wrote their bio <laughs> unless it's a speaker's bio which you know um use your if you're writing a speaker's bio it's real, I guess it would depend on the piece of content um because if you're if you're kind of uh <clears throat> cribbing your about page for your speaker's bio, when you write your speaker bio, you say you use third person. And then for your about page, you use first person. Um, and I, like, I've seen different styles, but I like I. I, I, I think the really important thing in an interesting website is the person behind it for you. So I think we're focusing right now on, on the, the outside, you know, the makeup. Yeah. Behind the makeup is an interesting person. Yeah, definitely. Story. Who, you know, I mean, go on a trip, do anything, but, you know, bring something interesting to the table. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to sound like everybody else in the room, you know? Yeah. So, unless you're interesting, it's not going to be interesting. Yeah. So, you know, this one um, kind of really really brings out like you want to go to that restaurant you know or you know catch these people at a food festival and say what made you <laughs> leave because they, this couple left downtown toronto to come back to niagara where this guy is from <laughs> and you know and buy a 1974 vw camper <laughs> and start an oyster uh start an oyster house like not everybody does that i want to meet these people <laughs> and you know i want to eat at the restaurant <laughs> and i want to find out all about them um yeah, it's a small business they always say that you're buying the owners yeah so you like they're buying they're buying they're not buying what you do they're buying why they're buying your why right so you have to find this this page is kind of heavier on pictures but find your why and then drive that point home um, emotions are big people don't buy based on emotion they based or they they buy based on emotion not logic um, the logic supports their justification <laughs> um, so supporting documentation um, if you're selling a piece of software um, or you know, uh, benefits, you know, basically benefits over features um, is what I'm trying to kind of say here. So we connect and we identify with one another based on emotion. Um, we justify our purchase decisions with, well, this is the features it has, and you know, this is why my decision is right. So when you're arguing with your spouse, you can say, well, this dishwasher is this. <laughs> or, you know, this digital camera is this. But there's something that attracted you to that business. What is it? Um, and that, you have to ask your current customers. Yeah. Um, anything else? Yeah. So I um, actually the only <coughs> the only examples in this presentation that are mine are this one and this one. But what I do um, with my clients is particularly for TIW, I was on site interviewing their people and you know, actually walking around their place um, where they're building these machines and where they're building these pieces. Um, I was you know, kind of on site with them for a good couple of months, a good three months by the time we were done that project, writing bios and kind of meeting all their people and kind of getting the culture um, for what I'm supposed to write because steel storage tanks I didn't know anything about steel storage tanks or the industry and we you know what I love about my job is that I get to meet pe like, different people every day so 
you know, a contrast to, you know, manufacturing and, um, you know, social media and digital marketing is is huge. But it's really about connecting them to their audience. So I do interview them. I do love to sit down with them in person or remotely, virtually, if I have to. But I really like what I call those kitchen table conversations and getting them, getting, getting them to drill down to their why. Now, why are they in business? Um, I just got my five-minute warning, so I can take one more question. So I noticed that uh, in the examples, <clears throat> the URL has about us at the end. Yeah. But I noticed the, the headers are different. I like, like, I mean, this says school. The other one says our story. Yeah. Uh, I like that. So what's your, like, experience with that using, uh, do, do you think there's one that works really well? Like, I really like our story. I haven't really seen that one before. Yeah. Um, I think for... Yeah, it, it's really based on your business and kind of what your um, what your voice is and what your tone is. Like scope is uh, corporate wise. Um, that's you know here's everything we do, and our story is really personal. And what I do is, to me, driving home the fact that you know here it is. I'm going to explain to you right now, plain, plain English, and she's really clearly saying, it's me. Let's talk. She's, she's taking a stand and saying, I'm not going to tell you I'm a 10-person company. I'm not going to hide behind the fact that it's just me. I'm going to kind of, kind of proudly say that it's me and you. And she's... Maybe I'm thinking about this too much, but she's saying, like, she's kind of a partner, right? So it's really dependent on what your what your goals are for that page. She's actually done a really good job of saying what she does for her customer as opposed to saying what she's about. Yeah. And that's probably preferred. Yeah. So what your clients are really looking for when they come across these paragraphs is, I think, exactly this. Not what you do, but what can you do for them is what they're looking for. Um, so uh, she kind of spells that out really perfectly here. Um, she creates custom online solutions for savvy entrepreneurs who want more than a cookie-cutter website. That's a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Uh, and she, she specifies, like even somebody who's not into online marketing, doesn't know any of this lingo, could say, okay, she can help me out with my visual branding. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's right there. This is part of her full size website. Like it's on the one, it's a one page website she has? Yeah, so this is her site. Like, is, it, is the about just halfway down the page? Um, I think it might be a separate page, but. Um, because a lot of them you just click on it and it just brings you to that part of the page. Yeah, um, but she. What did she do? Oh. Yep, it is one page. Um, How do you feel about one page? I, I, I don't know. I have different, like, different opinions on. <laughs> I, I like the my own site is like different pages, um, SEO wise. Um, I've heard different pages are better, but I've also, you know. Depending on how they're how they're developed and how they're done, um, when pagers can work too. I think it depends on what your like what what your goals are there too. So. Do you think it's annoying when people put a menu and it just drops it down halfway through the page? Not necessarily. Like I like <laughs> I like to control things. Like I like to click on and like yeah, can go to a different page. But when it just goes down halfway, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> This is a different page, right? I, I think it is. It. Yeah. Uh, so... No, no, it's there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's all one page. So she... Uh, 
So what, what happens when you press a vote? Where does it go? Drop down? This is a vote. That is. So what are, when you go home? So when you go to when you go to her home page, let's see what happens. Oh, it's slow. It's slow. What's going on? Oh, yep. Okay. So that's a different page. So you click the about page to go to about. All right. Um, but thanks everyone for for kind of engaging.